Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Mike Prince Show. Of course, we come to you each and every day with the world of HBCU and beyond. Today will be no exception to the rule. I want to remind you that you can follow me on Twitter at Radio Guy. Instagram is Radio Guy 22. And, of course, the website, obnradio.com. Our special guest today is absolutely no stranger to those that listen to this show for any time. And some of you have accused me for having a man crush on him. That's okay, too. My friend, my brother, Shotgun Willie Simmons. How you doing, my man? I'm doing good, Mike. Good to hear from you, brother. Well, it's good to hear from you, too, man. Um, I've been getting a hard time behind you, man, a hard time. So, yeah, I know, <laughs> I know Mike, your guy's gone now. You got to turn the page and keep it moving. And I'm keeping it moving, man, but it's always good to hear from you. Well, you know, it's hard to remake magic, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And speaking of magic, we're going to get this out that way right now. You stood me up, man, at the MEAC deal. Man, you know what? I, I tell you, it, it was it was so many things going on. I mean, we had they were pulling us all a million places. And um, I, 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 if you, you weren't the only one. You know, you were the only one I felt bad about. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not worried about nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to feel bad about. Okay, but it's all good. You've been forgiven, man, and, and we're back on the page. Look, you got seven, eight months under your belt now at FAMU. Um, you're still somewhat on that honeymoon stage. Bring us up to speed on how things have been. And um, even though they have you kind of in the mid-mark uh, of the season, everybody has to be projected somewhere. How are you assessing your team as you're getting ready for that first opening kickoff? Well, you know, I, I think we had a productive spring. Uh, I, I think we've talked since the spring, but uh, we thought spring was really productive for us, you know, teaching the guys uh, the new schemes, you know, really uh, teaching them how we operate as coaches and the new, um, you know, culture that we want to establish here at Florida A&M. And uh, the summer was uh, was fairly productive. You know, we had the vast majority of the guys in school. There were a few guys that had some internships and things of that nature that weren't able to attend. But for the most part, you know, we had the majority of our guys here, and that's something that's I think that's very important um, in building a program. I think if you look across the country, um, everybody's trying to make that push to get your guys in summer school, and so um, I commend the administration for for going above and beyond, and you know, finding the funds to 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 provide our guys an opportunity to be here, um, you know, the months of June and July. And of course, we reported last week, um, had our first practice last Friday, and uh, we just finished up with number six today. So. Uh, went full pads yesterday, uh, went shoulder pads and helmets today, and uh, we're getting you know close to, uh, two days away from our first major scrimmage. So a lot of encouraging things that I see from the guys. You know, they're, they're, they're working hard. Uh, we're practicing at 10 o'clock every morning, and, of course, about around 11, 15, 11, 30, that's, that, that big eye in the sky, that sun starts creeping right over the top of us. And anybody who's been in North Florida, Tallahassee, knows it's one of the hottest places in America, and um, it's taking its toll on our guys. But it's building a lot of mental toughness. I'm um, really liking the way that the guys are responding, and, and we're working ourselves in a playing shape to be able to play as fast and as physical as uh, Coach Street and I want them to be. We are talking right now with Coach Shotgun Willie Simmons of FAMU. Now, you talked about the transitional as far as coming back home, getting things ready. What were some of the things that were a pleasant shock and then some things that were a pleasant surprise, even though you were looking at FAMU and had familiarity with FAMU, but when you actually got there, it was a little different pleasantly or surprisingly from your perspective? Uh, well, uh, from a pleasant surprise standpoint, um, you know, I was, I was really surprised with the, with the mental makeup of the, of the guys, the attitude of the team. You know, whenever you take over a team uh, that hadn't won in, for all intents and purposes, seven years, uh, you worry about their mental makeup. You know, are they mentally tough guys? Are they guys that are going to quit at the first sign of adversity? You know, what's that thing that's caused them to be so unsuccessful um, over the years, and, and so I was, I was uh, pleasantly surprised. One with their size. I mean, it's a very, very physical, big football team, um, a lot bigger than the team that teams that we had out there at Prairie View. And um, you know, again, when we started to do um, team activities and, and things that challenge them as individuals, uh, they responded pretty well. And so I, I was really surprised with that aspect. Um, and so I think that's going to bode well for us moving forward uh, because you don't have to work as hard to maybe change. Uh, some of the mindsets of the guys. Um, you know, I, I think whenever you you got a place such as Prairie View, that's for all intents purposes from the black college level, pretty pretty established or sound uh, financially. 
um, you, you kind of forget the, the reality of, 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 you know, low resource institutions. <laughs> so uh, there have been some, you know, some, some, some monetary or financial strains that have been placed on us um, as far as, you know, being able to hire people in a timely fashion, um, you know, being able to, to operate and do some things um, that, you know, honestly, Prairie View spoiled me with. And so uh, that was probably the, the, the reality that, that, uh, that I was brought back to. Um, but again, like our athletic director always says, it's, it's just a great opportunity for us to, to do something special here. And, and that's what we're looking forward to do. And uh, the fan base is excited. You know, giving has been uh, tremendous more than ever. Um, ticket sales have skyrocketed, you know, since since last season in the past, and so I think there's just a revitalized energy uh, here at Florida A&M, and um, I'm excited about the opportunity to lead these young men uh, this coming fall. Well, you had a strong performance. Well, I should say attendance uh, with over 7,000 to show up for your spring game, so that's always a good indication and a sign. If I'm not mistaken, you guys were charging for that that spring game too, correct? Ah, uh, yeah, we charged five dollars. Okay, so they say everything counts. We're talking right now with Shotgun Willie Simmons. Now, okay, Coach, you're into your second head coaching gig. Uh, Obviously, you have grown uh, with the opportunity that you had at Prairie View. What would this Willie Simmons say to the old Willie Simmons and then vice versa as far as where you come from and where you are right now? Well, the one thing that I think I've – had to learn to do as a head coach now that you know like you said it's my second job is um you know trust my gut and you know i think uh the first time you're your head coach or in any type of leadership position you know you, you you're not saying worried or concerned about what others think or say um, but that's always in the back of your mind you know am i pleasing people am i you know uh making people feel good about things and, and sometimes that causes you to maybe second guess yourself you know there's some decisions that i would have made uh, the first three years at Prairie View that I didn't make because I was worried about how it would be perceived by people, you know, and it, at the end of the day, it wasn't, wasn't best for the program. You know, now that I'm here um, with, a, with another opportunity to, to lead a program, um, you know, I, I think that I'm able to make those decisions now. And, and it, you know, I've learned that you're not going to please everyone. And there's always going to be someone who uh, disagrees with what you say or what you do, um, think that they know a better way. But at the end of the day, um, I'm the one that's held responsible for this program, and if it's successful or not. And so, um, you have to you have to be a, a, a thick skinned tough skinned person to to be a posi- in, in a position of leadership. And um, I've been I've been I was thankful, you know, to be at Prairie View for those three years, and you know, we were able to have some success. So obviously, we didn't win a championship, with you know, which I hope to do. Um, but again, I think I'm a better coach now uh, because of the experiences that I had at Prairie View, and hopefully, it'll bode uh, well for us here at Florida and all right, now you know I got to reverse just for a second. Give me the one thing of your decisions that you made that you wish you had done differently. <laughs> you just put me on the spot. Let me see. Um, uh, you know, there were some personnel decisions. Uh, I, I won't go into details because you know, those guys are still there, and I, and I don't want to, um, you know, alienate any any player that I had the opportunity to coach. But there were some personnel decisions um, that I would have done differently um, had I really just sat there and thought what was best for the team. Um, you know, maybe not what was best for that moment or for what the outside appearance would be, um, but what was overall best for the team. And I think had I made those decisions, of course, I'm not a psychic. Of course, I couldn't predict what would have happened differently. Um, but, I, but I do believe that things might have turned out differently for us um, had I made a, one or two personnel decisions, um, you know, last season that, that I think would have maybe helped us possibly compete for a championship. Okay, that's fair enough, I'm, and, and we will move on for that. I don't want to put you on the spot too often, but, you know, I'm a spot checker every now and then, so I got <laughs> I got to keep you honest, right? No question. <laughs> Talking with, right now with Shotgun Willie Simmons, head coach of FAMU, getting ready for his inaugural season with the Rattlers, and from the buzz and everything, uh, your quarterback situation, everybody says that, that the Rattler Nation is back, baby. Um, you come back from a 3-8 and eight season, or you inherit a team from a 3-8 and eight season, you're coming off a six and five season your last season at Prairie View. It's it's a combination of not necessarily where you wanted to end your season. What is the rallying cry for Willie Simmons within? Uh, well, again, it, it's sticking uh, true to my core values and principles. Uh, you know, we still 
have I seven Fs? Uh, of course, I think they're still plastered on the locker room there at Prairie View. So I don't know. I don't know, man. I think they got rid of that, man. They they they, they, they might have. They, they graffitied might've. all that off of that. No, I'm just I, messing with you. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be mad at them. If they did. Uh, they can take the the wallpaper and, and, and bring it over here. But uh, <laughs> but no, we, we we still have our our philosophy, our seven Fs of excellence, and you know if if we uh, stay true to those uh, as a as a head coach, if I stay true to those. Uh, if our coach staff stays true to them, if our team stays true to them, um, I, I believe success is, is, is you know, imminent. And um, like I told the, the team at Prairie when I first got there, you know, I can't put a timetable on when we'll win championships. Uh, it, it'll be when everyone, you know, buys into what we're trying to do. And that's full, uh, fully believes in our seven Fs. That's really believes in the brotherhood that we're trying to build here, that understands the legacy and tradition here that we've, uh, task with it, with reestablishing, and once we do those things, I, I think you can have immediate success. Uh, you know, you look at across the two leagues, the SWAC and the MEAC, you know, the two prominent uh, HBCU leagues in FCS football, um, or in, in college football in general. Um, the teams that have made those transitions, the Gramlins, the A and T's, the Alcorn, uh, they were all pretty quick turnarounds. You know, when we inherited that team at Alcorn. Uh, they were coming off, I think, a two and nine season, and in two years, you know, we were winning nine games. And third year, we won a championship. You know, Coach Files at Grambling, I think, in his third year, uh, won a championship. You know, A and T Broadway was able to turn that team around and, and win pretty quickly. And then, of course, he rolled off to the sunset, going undefeated. So uh, Mike London and Howard, you know, his first year, I think, uh, went from a sub five hundred uh, year to, uh, when before he got there to winning seven games last year. So I, I think it could be done. There's a lot of parity in these leagues. Uh, the talent gap is not very far from the best team to the worst team uh, record-wise. You know, again, I think it's just, again, the guys believing in the system that's in place, believing in the process uh, that, that the coaches are trying to establish. And, and once they do that, you know, I, I think the success follows. So I'm optimistic. You know, I, I like the direction that this team is going in. I like their mindset. Um, I like their energy, and I think that uh, we're going to definitely um, you know, surprise a lot of people this year. All right, talking again with Shotgun Willie Simmons. I want to ask you this question, Coach. Um, I chuckled when I first got wind of it. Now some of your um, prestigious Ivy League universities are now kind of dangling the carrot of possibilities of playing the MEAC or the SWAG champion in an FCS bowl. Uh, to try to draw some attention um, to <laughs> figure some things out, access, add money, or notoriety to their conference. How do you see that, and, and what's your response to that? Well, I, I think that's a response uh, to the success of the Celebration Bowl. You know, I, I think the, the, the three years that they've played that game, is it's been one of the top bowl games in, in, in all of college football. Of course, you know we're the only FCS uh, conference are teams that have an opportunity to play bowls. You know, the other, the other uh, member institutions in FCS football go to the playoffs. And, uh, of course, the, the, the uh, Division One FCS National Championship pales in comparison attendance-wise and ratings-wise to the Celebration Bowl. And so I think that, that it's drawn the eye of, of you know, FCS football and in the, in, in the other conferences. They're, they're, they're saying that I think the, the Swack and the are obviously doing something right. You know, whenever you have a chance to generate that type of revenue for the member institutions in the conference or to the conference champions and things of that nature, um, the, the the national exposure that the schools are getting. I mean, you look at the success of A&T since they won that first championship. You look at the success academically of Grambling, of Alcorn. I mean, all those teams that played on national TV in the Celebration Bowl, their uh, their enrollment's up. You know, their their academic rankings are up. I mean, it's, it's, it's had the same effect. Uh, that you know Alabama has had since Nick Saban took over, that you know Clemson's had since Davos Sweeney took over, and I think that's a direct result of the success of the Celebration Bowl. So I think everyone's trying to figure out now how to get a piece of the pie. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if it'll happen. Um, you know, I think we we we're sitting on the gold mine with it. We just got to make sure that we uh, continue to grow it and build it, and, and we have to all embrace it. Uh, I think all the member institutions in FCS football and SWAC and me, I have to embrace the Celebration Bowl, and, and, and even if your team is not fortunate enough to make it, as fans, we have to attend it, you know, because if we can continue to attend the game and we can drive, you know, ticket sales, if we can drive uh, advertising and revenue, then we can name our own price, you know, because, again, it's a TV game. Uh, it's, it's on national television. It's the first bowl game of the bowl season, and uh, I think the contract is about to run out on the first year of it. So when we come back to the table, you know, we can say, hey, look, Look at the type of money that we're generating, and, and and whoever's our sponsor, 
will probably up the ante and really allow our, our institutions in the SWAC and MEAC to, to really take off whenever we can generate that type of money for our program. So I think it's a great product that we have, and hopefully it can continue to thrive and flourish. And, you know, uh, I think it would be a lot better if, if, if the orange and green uh, is representing the MEAC playing in it personally. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, when you talked talk about a piece of that pie, it made me do a parody from uh, the movie Life. So how much would it take to make some of that HBCU pie? <laughs> some of this Ivy League pie. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> As you notice, they, they had to steal it. They had yes, to steal sir. it and run away yeah, with it. Yes, sir. Well, look, if you can read so well, why are you in here? Man, you got me off track, but that's some good stuff. Um, it's it's amazing how you can take nothing and turn it into something, then all of a sudden it gets everyone's attention. But that's, that's right. part of the legacy and the heritage of who we are and what we do, and I'm not ashamed of that at all. Coach, it is always a joy and a pleasure to talk with you, man. We uh, getting caught up on some things and we're going to be uh, talking with you throughout the season. And before we go to a complete end of this segment, give us a couple of guys who, who have jumped out on from underneath that radar for your uh, upcoming season. Well, I, I think uh, some guys that really look out for this season. Um, you know, I, I really have high expectations for Ryan Stanley, you know, our quarterback, you know, he's a uh, returning starter here. Um, you know, he broke the school record last year uh, for completion percentage. And anyone who knows family football, I mean, you're talking about Quinn Gray, who played you know, five years in the NFL. You're talking about Pat Bonner, who led uh, the FCS in passing yardage uh, his senior year. Oteem and Sampson, um, you know, uh, Jay Wan Sider. I mean, the list goes on and on uh, for those guys. And for him to, to have that record really speaks volumes for the type of player that he's capable of being. So I expect a big year from him, Chad Hunter. Um, our, our sophomore wide receiver uh, has a very similar skill set to Kadaro Hodge, who, who of course is, uh, was an All-American last year and who's currently with the Los Angeles Rams. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, I tell you, a guy that really has turned my head this camp is uh, Quintez Gallon. You know, he's our nickelback, uh, plays with a lot of energy. He, he's probably going to lead our team in special teams tackles as well this year. And, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. I, I think we have a, a lot of really good players and guys that have really worked hard to, to, to get themselves prepared to have a standout season. So um, I, I don't want to you know, really single out too many. Uh, those are just a couple of guys that, that just have jumped out at me during camp. And, and even some of the young guys, uh, some of the freshman guys that we've signed have really had uh, really strong camps. You know, George Webb, a freshman wide receiver that we have from Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, Abu Bendura, uh, a freshman defensive end from Stockbridge, Georgia. Um, you know, uh, Herman Jackson, a, a cornerback from – down in Miami, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see those guys, um, if, if not playing significant minutes, even starting for us uh, because they they perform so well. So very excited about the, the group of guys that we have returning. Um, very excited about the group of young men that we brought in. And I think this team has a really good nucleus of, of strong football players who really have a, a goal um, to, to go out as winners. And so um, just got to do my part as a, as a head coach to continue to motivate them, continue to push them, uh, continue to give direction and, and assistant coaches, of course, uh, carry that out and follow through with that. And if these guys respond, again, like I keep telling them, I think the sky's the limit for us. So uh, definitely excited about this opportunity. Uh, always a pleasure to be able to catch up with you and, and uh, talk to you. Of course, we're in the middle of camp. Uh, my quarterbacks are currently right now waiting on me to come meet with them. So, you know, you're the only person that could take me away from meeting time with my guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> we calling this the makeup, right? This the makeup call. I got you. I got you. No, but no, you know, I appreciate you very much, man. Uh, we're, we're pulling for you. Only time I'll be rooting against you. You know, I don't have to make it uh, be known, but I'll let it be known. Only time I'm going to root against you is you're going against PVU, baby. And you know, well, the only way that'll happen is we both make it to Atlanta. So there you go. You know, hey, there you go. Wishing them guys, wishing them guys well, and, and it, it, wouldn't it be something special if we both showed up in Atlanta for the celebration bowl? And yeah, no, on the field, not just for showing up for the bowl, but on the field. Well, that's, well, well, that's what I, that's what I mean, bro. <laughs> for playing each other in the celebration bowl. <laughs> All right, man. Look, Shotgun Willie Simmons, you get back to your QB session, man. We truly, truly appreciate you. He is Coach Simmons, leading the charge for the Rattlers at FAMU in the MEAC. I am the radio guy, the doctor. Dr. Mike Prince, thank you all so much for joining us. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Radio Guy, Instagram, Radio Guy 22, the website obnradio.com in the Prairie View community, 87.9 FM. And if you happen to be on the go, always check us out at 605-477-5066. And until the next time, you guys be blessed. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs>